G'day, how you going? This is Ian Appleish, your acrylic guru here from Australia. Welcome to me video. Today we're going to do a beginner painting, but I'm slowly through my channel upping the ante, trying to get more detail. So you're not just going to do the same old beginner painting over and over and over. I want to try and get you into more detailing as well. So we're going to do a, a landscape layout on my canvas board there. There's the sizes in centimetres and also in inches, okay? Because some people want to know inches as well. And before we get too further along, I'll just get the um, colors coming up the screen here as well so you can see what colors we're going to use in this painting. And I want to try and stick with some realistic colors, okay? And sometimes if the colors are just too bright, your painting's just not going to look right, all right? So um, that's what we're going to focus on today. And it's going to be um a sky and some water like a lake with some trees and stuff just a beautiful landscape all right so get over here and have a look at the canvas now there's my canvas this is a good canvas i've made a canvas panel good quality artist canvas that i've adhered to the canvas board and my horizon line is going to be quite light low because i want a decent sky in my painting and i want some shrubs and bushes and trees and then we'll get some beautiful reflections. So down here, we want to prep. I'm going to do the sky first, okay? So I'm going to work from the sky and bring everything forward. So I've got my flowing white paint, soft bodied white paint, and I'm going to mix that with Frittata to condition the canvas. So I'm just grabbing a brush to apply it, and I want to mix that in there. And later on, I'm going to use French Ultramarine for the color blue in my sky now I don't want to muck around I want to get straight into it so I want to paint this onto the canvas to the sky half and this painting my dear beginners is going to be blocking in why do we block in because we can build up the details on top so whatever your sky is how big it is on your canvas let's condition the white with retarder the flowing white with retarder on there okay now i'm not even going to wash that brush i might just get some of the bulk off it i'll put a little bit of retarder with the blue there and i want to pick up this french ultramarine now okay this is just going to be basic colors but a beautiful looking painting all right we're going to start from the top get the paint on there backwards and forwards okay I can see it's on there it hasn't broken up I've pushed it on there now I'm going to bring it down to my atmosphere level my horizon line okay just like that I'm massaging it in this brush is quite firm I'm going to get a um I'm just going to wipe the bulk off it and I want all this See, while you're doing this, you can go any old way, get that paint into your canvas print, and now I'm massaging it down again, okay? Now, this is the basis for a simple but effective, beautiful-looking sky, in my view. I want the top, if anything, darker than the bottom. Now, I've just grabbed some normal titanium white, and, okay, I know I'm having trees here, so I want this about there coming light and up into the sky. And if you feel you've done too much white, come back with the blue. Now I feel, all right, I might need a little bit more blue in there, Ian. So start at the top. Wipe your brush and bring it down into that white atmosphere. Play with your paint practice things and learn what's happening and working for you and you'll understand your mediums a lot better so down on my palette i haven't even cleaned that brush i've got some quinacridone magenta and i'm getting the littlest bit and putting into that blue and all that white and everything's going to create the um the purpley haze in the background and i want it about here <laughs> Get a bit more of that. I'm just putting the band right there in the middle. 
I do not have my light on properly here. Now I'm going to blend that down there and bring it up to the top there. I'll get it a bit darker. There we go. About there. I'll bring that down. I'm going to have bushes there. And I want to bring that up to the sky. It's more noticeable. I didn't have my overhead light on. Sorry about that. But I've, I have put it back on. Now see, that bam was too straight. I've just been tossing it up like that in my movements. So it's spreading it higher for me. Okay, there we go. We've conditioned this canvas with the flow white and retarder. It's wet. It's like an oil paint would work. On my palette, I've put some titanium white and I've just got in a tube toning grey. It's a mid-tone. Okay, that's going to be the, the shadow of my clouds. I'll put that over there. And I want my appropriate brush for putting it on and also for blending. I'm going to try this one. I bought this fan brush. I usually use this one for my clouds. It's a hog bristle fan brush. I don't know what number it is. It's all covered up with paint, but it's that big. Um, so this one, this is brand new. And it's quite firm as well. So I want to load that up. Now look at that, a big blob there. I don't know if you could see that. But I don't want that on there because it's going to hinder me. Cloud. I want to learn how to even load up your brush for things that you do. See, I've side swipe that on there both sides now you don't want to put too many clouds on your on your painting um I'm, i know i'm going to have an open space here so i'll put something about here so let's just create the top of your cloud with your fan brush or your applying brush whatever you're using and if anything i have a an overly shape with a bit of an edge on it you can do whatever shape you want and the higher up they are in the sky, you need a bit of a bottom on them, okay? Now grab yourself a blending brush and something to keep wiping it. Now watch how hard it is not to blend that cloud. We've just stamped it onto our conditioned painted canvas panel there. Now I'm going to stamp it and twist. Wipe your brush. Stamp it. Sometimes it'll pick up the underneath colours, which is good blend it give it a bit of a base see how I'm putting a deliberate line of a base on there now see the top this has got like the tip of a shoe going up like that I don't like that if anything I want to manipulate that to a bit more just like that and now just slightly dance and tickle the tops like that now I have a smaller fan brush and we're going to pick up that medium grey tint there and we want to stamp some shadow into that cloud. Wipe your blending brush and start dancing and blending. Not too heavy, you don't want to wash this away. Okay? You've seen me those people that follow my work, you've seen me do millions of clouds for the new people. This is what you can do. Now we're picking up the grey, the white. We've put a grey tint in there. Okay. Now to finish that simple cloud off, clean your applying brush and put new clean white paint on it. And let's just put our yumminess. A bit, some of it at the top and some of it crackling inside the clouds there. Inside the grey. And we just want to easy leave leave a lot of that bright white there but just softly sit it down into the gray and from the top bit leaving the white glare at the top and there's a beautiful basic but simple effective cloud now i might just put something else maybe here i'll do a different type there's so many different types you can do And then we're going to blend this. This is getting a bit lower, so I might just be different and um, pull this down a bit because we're going to have trees here. Wipe your brush. It's getting scratchy. Now 
Well, that looks a bit dumb like that, doesn't it? Let's just pick up a bit more and make that like that. All right, now we'll get the grey in there. See, we've done one dimension. Now we're up to the second dimension. We've just whacked some grey in there. Grab a beautiful soft blending brush. Stamp it and light twists. Give him his dirty bottom there. Now I've got quite a bit of yumminess at the top of this cloud already. I just got to put it in the grey because why I put it in the grey, it gives it that th third dimension. So pick up some beautiful clean white and just, you could see the difference. It's adding that pillowy, fluffy effect to your cloud. And we'll sit this down and that's our sky done. Okay. Sorry, getting carried away here. I've just put an overhead cloud here. I just want something overhead. Like this is above our head where we're looking. Just some sort of cloud light colour up in the sky there as well. And, you know, I'm just twisting it any old way, stamping it. Very lightly though, I'm not pressing hard when I do this. Not at all. How's that looking in the monitor? That's okay, a bit there. And I do want to give that a little bit of grey as well, just in the corner. So this is like we've got that clouds looking ahead and over our head as well. And of course, yumminess on this side. Okay, that'll do. All right, my microphone wasn't plugged in, so I've got to use my editing microphone. Okay, so I've got myself a small filbert brush here. It's not too soft, but it's not too hard either. And I'm going to use that to block in the scenery colours with sap green, got titanium white and cadmium yellow light. And I've also got over here some burnt umber. I want to mix the burnt umber with the cadmium yellow light to get the um, dead grass, the dead twig colour look going on in the um, scenery there, all right? So we'll block in the horizon line with this colour, just where the water's going to meet the bottom of the trees and the bank ground there. And we'll just block all this in. It doesn't have to be detailed. We're going to detail this later on. I want to grab this sap green and mute it with some of the white just so we can block in some of the um, colors up here and I'll start over here this is just blocking in we'll get this area done here now just block it in it doesn't have to be detailed here just take your time there we go block that in and we'll um, keep going over here get the um, shape I want some of it in the air so I want some of the sky showing through the um, foliage so I, I'm putting some up higher than it as well all right so we're just going to use this sap green muted with the white to block in the first color of our trees Now using the colour we had mixed for the sky, I'm just blocking in some of the sky colours into the water here, so as they'll match what's reflecting from up above. And I'll put some of that um, purpley colour that I tinted, I'll mix some of that up and bl um, brush in here as well, block in here as well, okay. There we go, just get that on there like that. 
Now I've got the um, sap green with the white again muted and I'm just blocking in the other half here. So just block it into that bottom ground cover there. Put some air in the trees. And now I want to block in the reflection colour of those trees and shrubs into the lower half of the painting so we'll have them ready to detail later on for the reflections into the water. Just match it up like that, follow the top and block it in. Sorry about this sound, it only happened in a few video files, it'll come back to normal later on. So we'll just finish blocking in our main colour for the reflections into the water half of the painting here. Just like that. Alright, that is dry, that layer. Now I want to do the next blocking in with the darker green. So I'm using the sap green with that same brush and I want to block in the darker areas. So this bush is going to be detailed. Once we detail over this blocking area, it'll have all different values. And copy the same rough pattern underneath in your water area as well. Just block it in and follow the shape near enough. It doesn't have to be perfect because the reflections aren't always perfect. We'll get the same going for all these bushes here as well, okay? Just block it in. There we go. Now I've got the cadmium yellow light and the ultramarine blue and I'm mixing up a brighter green than that sap green, okay? And we're just going to block that in, mirror image everything into the water reflections as well and across the horizon line here. So just copy everything top to bottom. Okay, everything is dry. I've blocked in all the different greens. The sky is dry and the blocking in is dry. Now I want to detail it. I've just got myself this little small filbert brush to stamp on some details on here. All right, I've got myself a deer foot brush. It's going to stamp some little black dots all over what we've blocked in. And I call them black freckles. And we don't want it blobby like that. What we want to do is get it on the brush enough so we're going to get nice little black spots like black freckles just like that all over our blocking in area on top of the painting there okay so we'll just stamp this on just try and control it and go all over the place so there's not a uniform pattern happening everywhere and every now and then look at it and work out especially down the bottom we're going to want to have it more darker to create shadow underneath the bush just down the bottom here like that, okay. There we go, look at that. So this colour that we've blocked in and we've just put the black freckles on, that was the muted green, which is here. So now I'm grabbing a bit more white to lighten that. Being acrylic, you want it wet enough to come off your brush. And we want to start creating bush tops in here, leaving some of the black, which creates the depth. Just take your time putting this on, just take your time, patience is a virtue. Just leave your darks in there and allow the blacks to work against all the lights in here and you'll have happy days forever. Down the bottom we've got that shadow, we don't want to go too much into that. Now next step to finish that shrubbery off is we've got the cadmium yellow light mixed with the burnt umber to get our dead grass dry twig look. So just here and there get some of this. I can see this, it's good. If you feel it's sitting on your painting but you just can't notice it just dab a little bit of extra white in there and I'm going to show you just what the little bit of extra white will do so I'm just going to grab a little bit of extra white just to lighten some of that up and you'll see it come out but you don't want it too too see that's too loud I added too much white 
I want to get some of this. This just gives it that real sh holistic shaded look. Okay, we've done that bush. Now we want to do this one. So we're going to get the bottom dark and put our black freckles in there. Okay, now that bush that we're going to detail was done in the sap green. So I want to grab the sap green and just the littlest bit of cadmium yellow light just to brighten it up a bit. Just so it's going to be a different depth of colour to the blocking colour. Get this going. You can come over there a bit. very slow process that's why sometimes I'm speeding up the editing here in this process I've just brightened that color up a little bit so I can hover over the black at the base of the tree just to sink it back a bit as well okay I've grabbed that dead color we mixed again and I want to Get some of that stamp through here. Not too much. Now I've mixed some yellow light into that green to make it lighter. And I want to have the light hitting certain bits of that. This is just adding dimension to the bush so the light from above is hitting certain bits that are higher than others and it allows the dimension to take shape in the bush that you're painting. Let's come along to the ground here so we'll get this all freckled up just to there oh doesn't matter if I go over there I'm turning it around so we're not getting the same pattern everywhere Because I'm only going to do this section so you'll see. What you can do if you like is freckle up the reflections in the water. Where are we up to? There. Now don't forget, see here it's a bit darker. So make sure you get that darker bit there. Otherwise once you've done it you'll think something's missing. There we go, see? And we've obviously got a, a band of something going there. You're just gradually going along. If anything, the bottoms are darker than the, the top area. So we are adding the detail in the water now for the reflections. So I grab something pretty flat, square and scratchy. I've got this little flathead brush. And we're going to grab our our colors so like this one here was a muted one I'll pick that one up and where are we we want to sort of get that there do a bit and scratch it down okay just like that just copy as much as you can from the top and keep scratching it down it'll bring the reflections to life in the water there Right, let's go to the other bush for the detail. So we're grabbing this green here, the sap green that had the um, bit of yellow mixed with it. And I'm just, up here I s stamped it like little dots. Down here, I'm doing them in lines. Make sure your paint is gonna flow off your brush and just sort of follow the um, areas where you can, just like that.
some bits may need pulling down with the brush some may not okay now we're going to grab the brighter color of that that we had the yellow mixed with it for the highlights this is oh, we got a lot of it down here <sighs> We're just getting the um, colours that are there up in the top, down in the bottom. And let's not forget that dead grass burnt stick colour as well. We'll get that colour in there as well. So we've got bits of it here. I'll put this one on and scratch it down just here and there. That'll do it. All right, we're on to this stuff now. So I'm just doing it in long lines here. How's that looking? I don't know. And roughly where our water is this is coming down like so now this band of green that we put on there in the, on our palette which was the the lighter muted color with the the white in it we had the muted green and we added a little bit of extra white with it i think so we're going to detail that now along here somehow and I think if that's too mutey we'll um, use it with yellow instead now where our um, water is which is roughly here you want to keep it a straight line use a ruler if you want to do this but there is our water's edge this is all going up into there and once you put this black between there it's given it the bullshit realistic look against the edge there okay if you can see what I mean continue those blacks where you feel they need to be and then we'll sink that water down but we'll do that at the very end okay we're pretty much finished that just that much there and um, within this we don't want too much of a blocked edge like that I've got the darker color and I'm creating some airness out there coming from the picture and hovering off into mid-air okay see like that this is the dark sap green I'm using we can probably come in there a bit just so as it doesn't look like a, a stamp blob and something was not quite right and that's giving some sense of realness to our picture you'll see how that looks more realistic okay that detail up there is finished we got to get the black freckles in all of this now so very easily gingerly carefully put your black freckles in just be sure when you're putting these black bits in to squint your eyes and work out where the dark areas should be over the light areas okay I've done all the black freckle shading area over the block in I'm picking up the muted green color and doing the detail over here just take your time when you're stamping on this detail doing it slowly wins the race there we go beautiful look at that now I want to grab this color 
the lighter version of it which is the sap green mixed with the yellow and we'll detail that it's a bit brighter I want it a bit brighter than that So I'm just highlighting this lighter area very slowly and having the paint nice and sharp coming off the brush. Still continuing here. Just adding the dead grass stick wood colour green to those bits here and there. Now I've got the sap green mixed with some yellow a bit just to get this darker patch here detailed. I've got some dark areas I want to keep in there as well. Still going on with this sap green mixed with the yellow to detail all these. I'm stamping on and some of this feels it's a little bit dark. I'm adding a little bit more yellow to the mix, just a little bit. And you'll see what it's going to do. It's going to bring this bush slash shrub in front of that other behind one. kept the darkness at the bottom I've dribbled some of the green just down in front of it now I'm grabbing that color that I just used and I'm highlighting it with some cadmium yellow light again just to get the Sun hitting them as well just the littlest bit over those browns that I put that's not too bad there's some brown there some up there tracing all the way through it now these I want to highlight I'm looking here and I can sort of see that these two bushes are crossing each other so I want to create that illusion with this one coming in front of that one, leaving some dark there. That's it. And just a tiddly bit in here. There we go. very lightly you don't want big ugly blobs of this and in those darker colors you got dark green the appropriate dark shades for each green that's in this painting 
There's a lot of greens in here. Just the lightest bit of light hitting these underneath bits as well. Got this one dribble in front of that one. I've got the muted green with more white just to highlight this lighter green here these are like a different green I suppose so they're being highlighted differently in my opinion yeah up here Okay, this grassy bank, I want to get the black now and start detailing that. So we want to get at least a straight line here. Let's get that paint a little bit wetter so it's going to come off the brush, but not too wet. We want a reasonably straight line here because within this, we're going to tassel it up, tassel it down into there to create the the depth now where this grassy dead stick grass color is meeting that black under those bushes it's a bit solid so what I want to do is break it and tease it down so when I put the highlights of that grass color there it's going to sit over this shadow and sink that bush back so I'm just carefully getting the dark here and just destroying that pretty much what looks like a straight line. Now I want my cadmium yellow light and some burnt umber mixed to get that dead grass colour we got up there. Okay, let's get some real fine... in front of those dark colors and we'll see how this is looking I don't want this too thick and blodgy and then we can highlight this I've grabbed my small deer foot and I'm picking up the burnt umber and from the horizon line here I'm going into the water and I'm just sort of putting the darker values back into that grass. Just to kill that big blobbiness of it all. This is just adding the darker values what it needs in there. And now what we've got to do is put the reflections in the water and we're finished. Okay, so we've got the canopy done. I've just got to add some branches in there, but I want to get these shadows done now. So see what see the colours we use there? We're going down to our palette and we're going to grab those colours and grab a pull-down brush as well and just don't kill all the darks, okay? Just go like that. Pull bits of it in there. Well, that, that's not too bad. We can see if that's going to straighten them up yet. Put some there and quickly pull it down. Now I want to get those lighter values. So we're going to grab the lighter value that we had mixed up. And where are they? We want to we got some distinctively right here and pull it down okay don't want that brush dirty if we can help it there's sort of some in the middle there 
and pull it down okay you can see leaving the blacks makes everything work so I'm gonna I've got this color on the brush so I might as well go along and where the um, those colors are I'll quickly just scratch them in Just adding the sap green with a touch of yellow in it to get all these reflective colours. So I'm quickly putting a few blobs there and pulling it down. All right, let's just finish the water off so it looks um, reflective. So I'm just grabbing the basic green with the yellow in it. And see the green? I want to horizontally... It's breaking up, so I'm going to wet the brush at a just so it's going to come off the brush a lot easier. That's it, and we want to scallop some of this water, the green. Well, they're coming a bit fat there, so we'll go a little bit thinner just so they're going to go like that. Okay. We're scalloping the green. Oh, get them straight. Get some of it. This brush has got a kick in it. And then we'll fix this up with some of the watercolour. So we're just splicing it like together. That'll do. Okay, that'll do for that. Now we've got the watercolour here. We want to start bringing that into here. Very finely. next to those greens like that see the trick is to get the the blue all the way back into the blue so here we want to go here back into the blue splice it into there a bit but please make these as thin as possible some of mine are going a bit thick but not all perfect now I've added a bit more white to that blue color that I was dragging and I want to just carefully put some water surface how's that looking not too bad just the thinnest and over the blue we'll get some water surface over here through these greens please try and get the practice getting these as thin as possible and your work will look so beautiful I'm sort of with the filming It's kind of feel like everything's got to be rushed because there's just not enough hours in the day. That same lighter tone that we were using, oh, that's a bit too thick. I want it really thin on the brush. 
and I want to come along the shoreline here and the very thinnest how's that looking yep we want to separate the top from the bottom reflections I'm just grabbing the burnt umber on a script liner and I want to get some trunks in here very lightly does it I'm getting a little bit of white with that just so these bits in this bit here where are we we got something there coming down And we're just going to finish it off. So I've got my little flat, it's like a little blending brush. I'm going to pick up some white on it. Okay, just pure white. I want to get it off the brush. Okay. And then come across... ...the water and put that glass surface on there. Oh, not too heavy here. I just put my signature on there. And of course we will put a frame on it. <coughs> See how she looks. There we go, that's not too shabby. We've got a bit of a realistic water and some trees and a basic sky. We've virtually got two types of clouds, some overhead ones, a cumulus cloud. Okay, check the links in the description below for my Facebook page, my uh, tutorial video paintings for sale and my video catalogue. I've got over 200 video tutorials in my YouTube video library there and there's also a patreon page for those who like to support my content i'm quite happy with that today was a hot day here in perth but i'm in the air conditioned studio now i'm going to go and edit all this together all right if you like what we've done tell your friends but if you don't be sure to tell everybody all right goodbye good luck and good on you